All right, so my name is Ed Chambers. I work with the data processing and the science archive teams at the Sophia Science Center. And uh, for the next few minutes, I just want to show some of the highlights of our science archive at URSA. So first up is uh, an image of our galactic center at 25 microns. This is obtained with our forecast instrument. Uh, this image, along with another one at 37 microns, were taken as part of Matt Hankin's uh, legacy project in cycle seven. Uh, it's a really rich data set. It's beautiful. And almost as importantly, it's super easy to access at URSA. Uh, all I had to do to make this slide was uh, download the FITS file, load it into my favorite FITS viewer, and that was it. Uh, it's already stitched together, it's calibrated and ready for analysis. Uh, of course, showing this image also gives me a good excuse to show our, our beautiful press release image of the Galactic Center, where we've combined the, the SOFIA data along with some Herschel and Spitzer data for this really uh, spectacular infrared view of our Galactic Center region. Uh, if I zoom in on a, a couple of small subregions of the, the larger mosaic, here on the left is uh, the quintuplet cluster and the pistol star, and on the right is the circumnuclear disk and the little mini spiral that's feeding material onto the supermassive black hole in the galactic center. You see even the, the detail in these smaller subregions is really quite good. And so if you're interested in the galactic center kind of as a whole, or even if just a particular object or a region within the galactic center region, uh, I'd really encourage you to download and explore this data set. Moving on is uh, another one of Sophia's legacy project. This one's titled Feedback. Uh, the project's led by Xander Thielens and Nicholas Schneider, and its goal is to study the impact of the strong winds and radiation from young high mass stars on their local environment. And so to do this, we're using the upgrade spectrometer and we're mapping 11 high mass star, form star formation regions in the uh, C plus line at 158 microns. And so since we're mapping with a spectrometer, the final data products are data cubes. But what I'm showing uh, in this color image is an integrated intensity image of the C plus emission from the, from the data cube that I downloaded from URSA. I'm also showing a couple of spectra that I extracted from the cube to kind of give you the idea of um, the velocity resolution, which is sub kilometer per second, as well as the, the really uh, strong signal to noise. Uh, here's another example from the project. This is M16. And again, just really nice uh, spatial resolution and um, velocity resolution. You also might be able to tell that these maps aren't quite complete. Uh, the feedback project is something like 30% complete right now. Uh, we're continuing to make observations of it. And with these legacy projects, as soon as the data are processed and archived, they're available for public download. There's no exclusive use period. So that's a really nice advantage of these legacy projects. So moving on from the legacy projects, I wanted to show something that I've called project synthesis. This goes back to something BG was mentioning about taking advantage of uh, multiple observations of the same objects across different instruments. Uh, what I did was I just went to the archive and plugged in a couple well-known objects and just kind of poked around to see what images I could find that I, I may not have even been familiar with. So. Uh, the first of these is 30 Dorada. So this is a massive star forming region in the large Magellanic cloud. And on the left is a polarization map from our Hawk Plus instrument. Uh, the color is the total intensity and the small black lines are the polarization vectors. And the center image is uh, from our FIFLS spectrometer. This shows uh, C plus line emission along with its surrounding continuum. And then I extracted a, a C plus spectrum from the grain instrument toward a local peak in the FIFLS instrument. So if you're interested in the role of magnetic fields in star formation or feedback in low middle listening environments, then these data are, are sitting in the archive ready to, uh, to be downloaded and analyzed. The next uh, object I looked at is Orion. And, and to be honest, this is a bit of a cheat because I know we have a ton of Orion data in the archive but it really is a nice showcase of uh, a lot of Sophia's capabilities. So uh, the center uh, image that you can see is um, our C plus map of the Orion region. This is over a square degree in size and was taken um, from over 2 million spectra. So this is a, a really nice, uh, nice image to, uh, to look at. We've already had a, a couple papers about this, but there's, um, it's so large and has such great resolution that you know, we, can, we can keep looking at this for a long time. 
On the left is a Hawk Plus polarization map of the, uh, is kind of the heart of the nebula. So here is the Orion bar. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but it's on the lower left of the image. And the bright spot is the BNKL object. Uh, if you look at the, the top right is a, another image from our FIFLS uh, spectrometer. This is CO 16 to 15 emission from the BNKL object. Uh, and then there's an XC spectrum around six microns, also BNKL and a forecast 11 micron image of the Orion bar. So, so as I mentioned, I mean, this is only a subset of the Orion data that we have, but um, it really does highlight the diversity of data products that we have um, coming out of SOFIA from multiple instruments at multiple wavelengths and multiple observing modes. So to, to wrap up this section of the presentation, I just want to point out that we have over 12,000 calibrated science-ready public data products at URSA. Um, I've included the, uh, the URL to our search page there uh, on the right side, but it's very easy to navigate to it from the, the main URSA page. Uh, if you're kind of interested in some more of these highlights uh, from our archive, uh, you can visit the URL I've listed here. This is also, you can navigate to it from our main SOFIA page. And of course, if you're ever having trouble finding uh, a data set, viewing or analyzing data, you can always contact us at our help desk. Um, and during this meeting, you can come by our booth and chat with us there or set up a time for a more uh, detailed discussion. So uh, that's what I have. And I think now I'll pass it over to Luisa, who's going to um, present some more information about navigating the, the archive at URSA. So I'm trying to inoculate myself against uh, internet hiccups. And so I have a four and a half minute video here <clears throat> that hopefully will just work. Here's a quick introduction to the SOFIA archive. The URSA main page has a link to SOFIA, but also note that it has a video tutorials link down here and the help desk. The video tutorials link describes how we organize our tutorials and has links to the playlists that combine a bunch of videos on a similar theme. Sophia is here, we go to the Sophia archive, and the most common search is probably going to be a position search. So you can put in the position of the thing that you want. Note that you can search on a list of positions, a solar system target, look for any serendipitous observations of a solar system target, or do a search over the whole sky. You can add additional constraints like the proposal information, the observation information, including observation date, instrument constraints. You can limit the search by wavelength, or by instrument. And you can search by data product constraints. Level zero and level one are the rawest level of data. Level three and level four are the highest, most processed level of data. For this example, I'm just gonna leave all of this as the defaults and search. This is what the search results look like. The tab that's on the top is an AOR tab. It's the most compact view of the observations. It found 100 observations that met our search criteria. If you want to see these depicted on the sky, if you pick the coverage tab, it shows all of these polygons on top of the sky in near infrared. All those polygons correspond to all of the observations that it found. Each of the instruments we requested has a tab in the results. If you go to the XES tab, you can see that it found 657 data products that met our constraints. The data tab here renders the specific observation that's selected. In this case, it's a mask file, so it's not terribly interesting. But this data product is this spectrum here. You can click and drag in the plot and then filter. And then the plot zooms in. You can also view this as a table. And this table, just like this one, has the ability to filter. Here you can see the filters that I imposed from the plot. To cancel the filters, hit the cancel filter button. You can go back and view it as a chart. You can also make the chart big. Let's go back and look at some of the other data products. FIFLS has a bunch of data products in here. We asked for level three and level four. Remember that level four is going to be a higher level product. So let's pick level four, filter. Now it's showing the data product here on the right. There's several different HDUs and within each HDU there's several wavelength planes. You can use the arrows to navigate or you can type in a number and jump to that plane. You can also use this menu to pick which HDU you want to work with. Flight cam has images that are shown here. Forecast has images that are shown here. 
For both Flycam and Forecast, these are FITS images, and so you can interact with the FITS images using this toolbar on top. There's another movie in the URSA YouTube feed that talks about what all of these do. FBI Plus doesn't have any observations on M42. Great has lots of observations. The red rows are proprietary data, so unless you're logged in and have access to that program, you can't preview or download that data. This data product is public, and so you can see a preview of the spectrum here. Here too, you can view it as a table or a chart. You can also view the other spectrum that is in this file. You can also, if you really want to, look at all of the images in the file as images. For some of the great data, this particular file is a FITS file. If you go to a tarball, the tarball can't be shown in the data tab, but there's usually a preview that shows you what kinds of data can be found in that tarball. Hawk also often has previews, but you have to pick the right kind of data. Let's limit this to level four data. There, it's got a preview of that data. For some of the data products, you can get a preview of the data here. And here you can scroll through the planes, or you can pick the planes from here. To download data, all you have to do is click the tick boxes at the beginning of each row that you want. Or if you want all of the data, click the tick box at the top. Prepare download. Depending on the data product, you may want the PNGs, the preview images that come with the data, or you might want any region file overlays. You can choose to have the data structured, in other words, lots of subdirectories or no subdirectories at all. This is where you put the file name that it's going to use for your local disk. You can save it on your local disk or on the URSA workspace. If you're downloading a lot of data, I recommend turning on email notification. Then when all the data are packaged up and ready for you, you'll get an email with a list of links to download all the data that you've selected.